Well, last time we talked about the Ekman-Hilton law, but I chickened out of showing the two slightly curious facts about it, which is that you can deduce that the two operations have the same unit. You don't have to assume it. And the other thing you can deduce is that they are both associative, and you don't have to assume that either. So the way to do it, remember that the Ekman-Hilton law says that if you have two operations, circle and star, which we're going to write as horizontal and vertical composition. So this one's vertical composition, and this one's horizontal composition, then if you've got the fact that, if you've got interchange, which basically says this, then you can deduce that both the operations are the same and commutative. But you have to, what we used when we went around that clock was the fact that they both have the same unit. And in fact, we can deduce that. So if we, if we say that V is the vertical unit, so V vertically composed with A in either direction is A, And if we say that H is the horizontal unit, so H horizontally composed with A on either side is A, then what we can do is we can cunningly use both V and H at the same time. So if we put a V and an H here, and a V and an H here, then what we get this way round is that that's the same as doing well, V vertically composed with H is just H. And here, it's also just H, so we get H, and that's just H, because H vertically composed with H is H, horizontally composed with H is H. But if we now use the interchange law here, then we do this the other way around. So now we get that V horizontally composed with H, well now it's H that's acting as the unit here, so we just get left with V, at the top, and we also get left with V at the bottom, and now we're vertically composing the vertical units, so what we get is V. So look, we've got the H equals V, showing that the two, uh, the, the two different units are the same. Now we can do a similar sort of trick for associativity, so for associativity, but this time the thing that we're going to use has to involve an A, a B, and a C. So we're going to put our A here, our B here, and I'll see here the random unit there. Well, if we do this this way around, what we get is um, A, we get A composed with one, oh, let's put it over here. We get A vertically composed with one, star with B vertically composed with C, right? But star and circle are the same, and that's the unit. So that's the same as just A circle, B circle C, right? But now if we do interchange on it, we get C1 and B A here. And what's that? That's A horizontally composed with B uh, circled with 1 horizontally composed with C. But what's that? That's just the same as A circled B because circle's the same as star. This whole thing is the same as C, so we get C. So we've got that this way of parenthesizing ABC is the same as that way, so we deduce associativity. So that's quite fun. Now, the reason I've been using horizontal and vertical composition as the example is that this is what you can do if you're in a two category. So here's an example of applying the Edmund Hilton argument. A two category with only one zero cell and only one one cell, one zero cell and only one two cell is in fact a commutative monoid. So what's a commutative monoid? It's a set equipped with a commutative operation. Well, the underlying set that we're going to use is the set of two cells. So I suppose this needs to be small. Um, so the set, the underlying set, is the set of two cells. And the operation, well, we can either take it to be circle or star. Well, we've got two operations. We've got 
circle and star, but they satisfy the Ekman-Hilton argument. So what we get is that they're the same and they're commutative. Um, so they're the same. Now you might ask me why I use the two category here and not a by category. I did the strict case because that's easier. The by category case is a bit more complicated because in fact horizontal composition in a by category is not strictly unital. So you have to faff around a bit. It does come out all right in the end, but you do have to faff around a little bit in order to make it work. Um, and so what you have is the following slightly interesting situation where If you start with a by category, if you only have one zero cell, one zero cell, what you get is a monoidal category. And if you only have one one cell as well, then what you have is commutative monoid. Um, you actually get a little, something a little bit more complicated than a commutative monoid uh, because you also have a distinguished invertible element left over from the unit constraint in the by category. But I'm not going to go into that now. <laughs>